Hello YouTube fam. Welcome back to our channel. In this channel, we will be discussing various topics in the exciting world of AI, machine learning, and computer vision. Our content is crafted by our awesome human team, but here's the magic. It's finely tuned and optimized by our AI wizards, bringing you top-notch information. And guess what? The presentation is delivered to you by our AI hosts and voiced by our incredible AI avatars. Let's get started. Welcome back. In this video, we'll work with the SO101 robotic arm using a leader follower setup. The leader arm is manually guided while the follower, our SO101, mimics that motion in real time. It's a compact six degree of freedom robot, perfect for tabletop tasks like Lego pickup. It has USB-C connectivity and Python SDK integration. Setup is straightforward. Power the servos, plug the USB cable, and ensure each joint starts at its home position. Adding a camera helps capture leader and follower movements for dataset synchronization. Refer the Hugging Face documents linked below in the notebook. Calibration is vital to ensure both arms stay aligned. Each arm runs a zeroing routine and stores offsets, so future sessions begin with synchronized coordinate frames. All right, now let's move on to calibrating both arms, the leader and the follower. We'll start with the leader arm. This is the one that's manually guided during teleoperation. Calibration here ensures that every joint from the base to the wrist starts in a well-defined zero position. As I move through each joint, the controller records its current angle offset and saves it inside the configuration file. Once the leader is calibrated, we repeat the same process for the follower arm. The calibration procedure aligns both systems in the same coordinate frame. This means when I move the leader slightly to the left or rotate the wrist upward, the follower will reproduce that movement exactly without drift or mismatch. Behind the scenes, these joint offsets are stored in small configuration files, one for each arm. The next time we start a session, the robot automatically loads these offsets, ensuring both arms are synchronized right from the start. Calibration might seem like a simple setup step, but it's absolutely essential for accurate mirroring and reproducible data collection. Without it, even small differences between the leader and follower could compound into large positional errors during teleoperation. Once both arms are zeroed out and their frames aligned, we're ready to begin recording our demonstration trajectories with confidence. Once calibrated, we record teleoperation episodes, move leader arm to demonstrate task, and the follower mirrors the motion live. Each pickup is stored as one episode, Once both arms are calibrated, we can start teleoperation recording. I'm manually guiding the leader arm through the full Lego pickup motion, reaching toward the block, closing the gripper, and lifting slightly. The follower arm, our SO101, mirrors the movement live in real time. Every action, each joint angle, gripper state, and timestamp is continuously logged to create a trajectory. This single demonstration is called an episode and we'll record several of them to build a data set. Each episode becomes a miniature example for the model to imitate later during training. The smoother and more consistent my motions are here, the easier it will be for the AST policy to learn precise and repeatable control. After a few recordings, we'll have a data set of image frames and robot states ready for fine tuning. First, I tried a pre trained small VLA model. When asked to pick up the block, it moved to a neutral center pose. This showed that we need to fine tune it for our specific hardware and environment. Using small VLA, the arm simply moved to a default center position instead of reaching for the target. We have to fine tune the model. After recording several teleoperation episodes using our leader and follower arms, we now need a model that can actually learn those motions, how to look at the scene and decide what action to take next. That's where ACK, or Action Chunking Transformer, comes in. ACT takes both the camera images and the robot's joint states as input and predicts the next set of actions, the 3D position, rotation, and gripper state. 
Instead of depending on reward signals like in traditional reinforcement learning, ACE uses imitation learning, directly cloning the behavior shown during teleoperation. And because it's designed for efficiency, it can be fine-tuned even on a Mac GPU, making it practical for small-scale robotics experiments. I recorded around 50 episodes. I trained the policy for around 40,000 steps on a Mac GPU using MPS, used the Larabot train script. Important parameters are the policy type, which is ACT. We need to provide the dataset location and steps. Each thousand steps takes roughly 10 minutes. During training, the model gradually learns to replicate the pickup motion from our teleoperation data, mapping the leader's arm movements to the follower with increasing precision. As the fine-tuning progressed across about 50 teleoperation episodes, the robot's behavior improved little by little. In the early stages, the follower arm's motion was jittery and uncertain. You can see it reacting slowly, sometimes overshooting or missing the Lego block entirely. That's expected at the start. The model doesn't yet know how to translate the visual information from the cameras into coordinated joint movements. Over time, as more leader-follower data was collected, the movements began to look more deliberate. The gripper started aligning closer to the block instead of wandering off. Each additional demonstration helped the model understand a little better how the world looked from its own camera view and how that related to the next action it should take. The training loss kept dropping gradually, showing steady improvement. Every small reduction represented the policy making slightly more accurate predictions, closer to reproducing the human-guided teleops sequences. In these experiments, we use the action chunking transformer as our policy model. It takes camera frames and robot states as inputs and outputs a sequence of low-level control actions, things like XYZ position deltas, wrist orientation, and gripper open or close. It doesn't rely on reward functions or reinforcement signals. Instead, it learns purely through imitation, cloning the actions demonstrated during teleoperation. One advantage of AT is that it's relatively lightweight to train. Lighting consistency, camera positioning, and even small changes in background clutter all influence what the model sees and how it interprets depth and color. In our setup, a single front-facing camera worked, but adding side or overhead views would likely help the policy build a better sense of 3D spatial awareness. Multiple camera angles make a big difference for manipulation tasks like grasping or stacking. You can also notice how perception quality ties directly into control stability. Maintaining even lighting and reducing glare helps the model focus on the real object features, the contours of the Lego block, its color edges, and the surface geometry. As training progressed, the robot's coordination improved. The reach, grasp, and lift motions started flowing together instead of appearing as separate, disconnected segments. Watching the demo, you can clearly see this evolution. In the beginning, the follower struggled. It often stopped short or nudged the block without lifting it. Later runs show partial pickups and attempts that get very close. Toward the end, the motion becomes noticeably smoother and more confident, even if it doesn't succeed every single time. What's encouraging is that the robot is now attempting the right sequence of actions. It reaches, aligns, grips, and tries to lift, which means the policy has learned the structure of the task. The precision will keep improving as we collect more diverse demonstrations and continue training. Overall, this experiment shows the potential of fine-tuning an action-chunking transformer policy on real teleoperation data from the SO101 robot. Even with modest hardware and a limited number of episodes, the model begins to exhibit meaningful learned control behavior. With better lighting, multiple cameras, and more recorded demonstrations, we can expect smoother, more consistent actions and a stronger grasp success rate in future runs. It's not perfect yet, but seeing the robot improve from human-guided examples is a strong validation of imitation-based training. Let us discuss some key takeaways. Fine-tuning with ACT dramatically improved control precision and motion stability. More teleoperation episodes lead to better generalization, and consistent lighting ensures reliable visual input. Using multiple camera angles provides richer 3D context, 
making the learned policy more robust and less sensitive to viewpoint shifts. Overall, clean, high-quality teleop data remains the single most important factor in successful robot learning. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more exciting adventures in the world of AI and machine learning. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more tech talks, and ring that notification bell to stay updated on our future explorations. Until next time, happy coding and keep the curiosity alive. Thanks for watching.